Politics surely more potent than ever continue to divide Americans right down the middle as the gap grows deeper by the day. And we look at the images of these individuals who lost their lives, and in the wake of it, there is so much discussion about the division in this country. Joining me now, the co-author of Unified, How Unlikely Friendship Gives Us Hope for a Divided Country, Congressman Trey Gowdy, and that was co-written by Senator Scott. Um, good to have you back on the show tonight, Congressman. Thank you very much yes, for being here. Um, yes, ma'am. You know, I want to start with what uh, what we left off with, with with Jonathan Swan, who covers the White House, and talking about the the sort of battle that goes on and the pink the fingers that are pointed over what happened at the synagogue this weekend. Um, but he felt that the responsibility lies more on the president than it does on the press because he is quote the most powerful person in the world. Do you agree with that? Well, I certainly agree he's the most powerful person in the world. He has a unique opportunity. Um, I have never been good, Martha, at changing other people's behavior. Um, I, I need to be good at engaging in self-reflection. And if every one of my fellow citizens would look in the mirror and say, what can I do to improve our country? How can I be less divisive? How can I be more intentional in my efforts to unify this country? I, I can't change... President Trump's behavior. I can't change the headlines at Politico and Washington Post. I, what I would love to see the president do when he goes to Pittsburgh is to, is to eulogize the lives of those lost. That's what's unifying. Uh, just like in Charleston, when, when nine of my fellow South Carolinians lost their lives simply because they are black. Get to know the people who lost their lives. That, that would be unifying for my fellow citizens. But but, but politicizing tragedies hours after they happen uh, yeah. is just reflective Ugly. of how incredibly divisive we are. Here, here's a picture that you tweeted um, with sort of like your dream of how you wish things could be. I explain what you meant here. Well, Bill Nettles uh, in that picture was a U.S. attorney under President Obama. He's, he's to the left of Chairman Mao politically. Uh, we've been friends for 10 years and we'll be friends until we die. Tulsi Gabbard is one of the kindest, uh, nicest, most decent people I have ever met. She happens to be a progressive from Hawaii. Uh, we are, you wouldn't put a progressive Hindu from Hawaii with a three-part Calvinist Republican from South Carolina. Uh, but we have been intentional in our desire to have a friendship. And, mm -hmm. and I think part of what plagues our country now is we have a tendency to surround ourselves with people who just ratify what we already Believe. I mean, if you want That's to understand true. how President Obama was elected twice, you got to ask somebody who voted for him. Mm -hmm. And the same with Donald Trump. The media cannot fathom how he is president of the United States. Ask someone who voted for him. They will tell you why he is the president of the United States. But if all you do is surround yourself with the philosophy department at Princeton, then, then no, there are no Trump supporters there. So go ask some people in real America who, who felt a, 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 an angst and, and, and uncertainty that led to his election. But if all we do is talk to people that just ratify what we already believe, yeah. um, you make a great, we're headed you make a in a bad point. direction. Um, you know, 80 percent of the country believes that we are divided. And, and the other thing that I think gets lost in this conversation is, you know, you talk about what happened in South Carolina. There's a problem with, you know, individuals who live in isolation, who are not part of a community, who perhaps aren't part of their own faith, um, who commit these kinds of acts over and over, they obviously are very deeply unstable, very deeply disturbed. And instead of talking about what's going wrong with the fabric of our of our community, perhaps that that this kind of person, you know, gets left out in the cold and, and allowed to do something like this, we end up, you know, deep diving into, you know, the things that he said on social media and, and, all, and all of this. Well, speaking of things that ought to unify us, Martha, there, there ought to be uh, common standards of decency. There, there ought to be a common acknowledgement that we need a moral code by which we live, that racism is wrong, that intolerance is wrong, that what Dylan Roof believed before he got in the car and drove to Charleston, not just what he did, but what he believed before he got in the car is reprehensible and insidious. And the same with the shooter in Pittsburgh. Uh, but, but when we lose that sense of unity that there is a moral code that, uh, that, that is not relativistic, it exists every day. Um, then, then, then it leads to this kind of malaise that, that unfortunately we find ourselves 
And, and uh, tragedy used to be unifying, but, but now, Martha, it lasts for about 30 minutes. Yeah. I, I want to focus on the victims. If, if President Trump will focus on the victims and their lives, um, I think that's what my fellow Americans would love. Not focus on the shooter and not focus on the politics of it. Focus on the lives that were lost and how that impacts dozens and, and hundreds of people that were involved so in true. their lives. I think yeah, that would right. be unifying. Chairman Trey Gowdy, always good to see you, sir. Thank you very much for being yes, here Yes, ma'am, you too.